So we've got a new moon coming up this week. It will be a new moon in Capricorn. That means we are winding down in the uh, moon cycle that began with the Sagittarius new moon. So we go from one cycle to the next. And so we're going to look today at what that new moon will bring, um, how it wants us to get organized and take what we've been working on throughout the Sagittarius moon cycle and put it into some sort of order, some sort of structure, something that uh, we want to create and focus on going forward. I'm Marina Orms here with your Astro Vibe for Sunday, January 7th. And with the uh, new moon in Capricorn, we conclude, we come to the end of the Sagittarius moon cycle. So the beginning of the current moon cycle was with the Sagittarius new moon in December. And so for four weeks, we have <laughs> that opportunity to work through the energies of the Sagittarius new moon. Now, Sagittarius is a fire sign. It is uh, getting us to focus on um, what what moves us, what motivates us, what we what gives us a sense of faith, hope, optimism, and so what what brings meaning to our lives, what our beliefs are, where we place our faith and trust, and um, and also how we kind of see the big picture. So how we integrate. Um, in the information and the things that we've been going through to tell a story, to make meaning, um, to connect with uh, how our hearts are uh, feeling and telling those stories, what our hearts want and what brings meaning um, through, through our heart's understanding, right? Our heart's wisdom. So as we work through that Sagittarius uh, moon cycle, uh, focusing on what it is we believe in, what we care about, what feels important, um, then we shift gears. And so stepping into that Capricorn moon cycle, we are going to be moving uh, into a space that is more, feels more um, uh, limited. So, so the, the um, hard things about the world, the things that are, you know, challenges, problems, what's wrong in your life or in the world um, is going to come up because those are the things that are saying, hey, you need to get things in order. You need to prepare. You need to um, get organized, create systems and be ready to um, to be who you are. So we don't have to think of this as a negative thing because it's truly an opportunity to create. So that is on the positive side of Capricorn. Um, the Capricorn energy is, is how we um, interact with the material world uh, to bring things into being, to bring energy into form, to materialize, to manifest, to create outcomes. And so that that earth energy, this the Capricorn being an earth sign, um, brings in that connection between uh, what we want, what we believe in, what we're working on, what gives meaning to our lives, and then how we put that into form, how we translate that into what it is we want to build. Um, so think in terms of your life and what uh, feels important, what feels true to you, what, what are the higher principles, the meaning, the truth that your heart uh, wants to connect with and have more of. Um, and so then thinking about how can you create systems and structures in your life to hold those um principles, right? And not just principles, but like things you love, things you want, <laughs> things this, what is the story you want to be living, right? So that's what we focused on and are continuing to focus on as we complete the Sagittarius moon cycle. But what we focus on next heading into the Capricorn moon cycle is how we take uh, that story and how we make it into something tangible. So 
uh, getting clear and thinking about, you know, reflecting back on the, the past moon cycle, the past few weeks, what you've been moving through, working on, thinking about, um, you know, whether that's on the emotional level and the personal growth level, or whether that's on, you know, just what you've been doing in your day-to-day -day life, what the focus, the themes have been, what has been showing up. Um, for you to think about. Because as you think about that, now really where the energies are taking us is they're asking us, what are you going to do about that? So what do you want to create based on what feels important to you? What gives meaning to your life? Um, so what are, the, what are the steps you need to do? How do you put the foundation in place? So Capricorn is all about creating a plan, creating a foundation, creating a schedule, you know, like mapping out a timeline of what you want to achieve and when and what you're going to do when to, to achieve that. Um, so and, and you don't have to like be perfect and stick perfectly to that map or that timeline that plan, but it's it like it gives you something to organize around, right? It br brings a structure into your life that allows you to create something meaningful. And so with that Capricorn energy, we are taking the meaning and we are putting it into form. We are making it tangible. What is, so you have to know what your goal is, right? What is the outcome you want? And, and thinking in, about it in terms of more what you want to experience than, um, than, you know, the specific thing like that you think you want, because, because the universe may say, Hey, you think that's what you want. Well, you, you may be underselling yourself, right? You, you may not be aiming high enough. So be open, um, get clear about what you want, and then um, allow yourself to be available for, for, for getting hands-on, making a plan, making a structure, something that is going to help you get organized or create a system or get something on the calendar um, that is going to be affirming the thing you want. So maybe it's planning a trip. <laughs> maybe it is um, planning a, a timeline for your business. Um, maybe it is planning a, um, a schedule for yourself that is going to uh, bring more nourishment into your life. So it's going to be individual for each of us in terms of what feels important, what feels meaningful, what we are working on, and how we're going to go about doing that. Um, but with this Capricorn energy, we want to get grounded. We want to focus on what is it we want to achieve and what are the steps to get there and what is the plan. So again, it's not about sticking perfectly to the plan. It's about putting some energy into thinking that through. And some of us are more naturally planners than others, right? Some some people really have a hard time with planning. And so if that's true for you, um, just brainstorm, you know, just think about like, what's one, two or three things I could do that um, help move me along my path toward the things I want. What is something I can do or um, put in place or some, you know, maybe it's cleaning your space, right? Maybe it's organizing and getting rid of some things that are cluttering up your space or um, not part of the plan. <laughs> and that sometimes getting that space cleared allows you to see things differently. So baby steps, make it a baby step, something that is very doable for you. It's not about doing something that's impossible to pull off. It's about doing that very tangible, very approachable and doable baby step that moves you in the direction of um, what feels true and right for you. Okay, so we have that Capricorn new moon. We also have Pluto in its 
final days of Capricorn for this time period. Anyway, it will return to Capricorn later this year. So if you missed my video about Pluto going into Capricorn um, and a new story for humanity, the astrology of 2024, definitely go check that out. Um, it's a big theme for this year. Uh, what uh, this outer planet uh, tiny little <laughs> Pluto, right? It's gotten demoted from being a planet, but not to astrologers. Astrologers find Pluto to be quite significant. So Pluto has to do with our deepest place of power and passion and truth and primal instinctual uh, energies and transformation. So the way we um, go through the process of transformation death to the old and birth to the new and uh, some of the ways that that can that process can sometimes be um, you know really mean having to let go of something to descent into the underworld so that plutonian theme of you know pluto is connected pluto was actually discovered around the time that uh, nuclear energy and nuclear bombs were invented <laughs> so it's interesting how often planets are discovered in a time period um, when that their energies are being reflected so it's just kind of an interesting aside but um, but anyway you know think about the power of a teeny tiny atom and how it transformed our understanding of life and our role in in the world and the universe um just through uh that that process of uh, the nuclear discoveries um but with pluto we're dealing with some inner some inner uh deep powerful very very powerful so you think about the power of nuclear energy and nuclear bombs and then you think about that being inside of you so you are you know there's that place inside of all of us that really um has that potential that power that um indescribable uh, ability to tap into something that can feel very sometimes very um profound or sometimes a little scary um, very transformative. And again, people who are more have more Scorpio energy in their charts are more comfortable with that uh, powerful Plutonian energy and themes of of death and birth and you know uh, the occult and some of those mysteries of life. So anyway, Pluto is that planet of power and passion and truth and transformation. And it is leaving Capricorn on January 20th to go into Aquarius. And so in these final days of Pluto in Capricorn, we're also having the process of reckoning what it is we've done in terms of our Plutonian and Capricorn. Pluto in Capricorn work since 2008. Um, we've been doing the work of that nuclear power moving through and that transformation and that death and rebirth sort of destabilizing our structures, our foundations, our institutions, our systems, government, healthcare, you know, you name it, institutions um, being transformed. So um, so that's because Capricorn is about structure, right? It's about that those tangible forms that govern and organize our lives, that create the systems, the rules, the limitations under which we operate. So, um, you know, so the same reason why you might get a traffic ticket because you're speeding, <laughs> um, right? Is like, it's a system that's, that um, sometimes makes you come against your limitations. But that same system, if we didn't have that rule, we would not be able to operate together, right? We don't, we need to have these group agreements about how we're going to behave and what um, rules and systems we're going to live within. Um, and, and some of us agree more than others, uh, you know, about different things, right? But in general, like we have to have those agreements in order to function as a society. 
And so those are some of the things that are really, um, uh, you know, in the process of transformation. We don't know what they're becoming just yet, but that's uh, with Pluto in its final days of being in Capricorn right now, um, all those things are coming up for us to look at like, okay, where, where is, what have you done? What have you not done yet? What is the work that is not completed? What are you going to be taking forward with you into Pluto being in Aquarius? And whatever's unresolved in Capricorn is going to emerge with Pluto in Aquarius. And we're going to be looking at it from different angles. So, um, so you know, Pluto in Aquarius is not, Pluto in Capricorn is focused on our systems and structures and ways of organizing, our ways of governing, our um, limitations, rules, etc. cetera. Um, Pluto in Aquarius is about transformation in the area of um, groups and communities, how we are um, uh, grassroots, wanting to change things on grassroots levels. Um, it has to do with thinking outside the box. So innovation, uh, future oriented, future oriented thinking, thinking outside the box, new solutions to old problems. Um, it also has to do with technology. So changes in technology, like some of those lightning speed changes. Um, Aquarius is, and the planet Uranus are both about shift and unexpected change. So it can be sudden. Um, it can be uh, things, things can change suddenly and dramatically to look very different than how they looked before. And you can actually see that already happening <laughs> if you think back um, or depending on how long you've been alive, right? 20 years ago, things were different and you can, you can name the things that were different 20 years ago. You know, um, we didn't, I, I don't know, I guess we had, we're just starting to have smartphones then, but social media was not even really a thing yet. You know, so there, there are things that are very different. Um, and and 20 years in the grand scheme of human history is is really just a blip so um so anyway technology could be shifting um anything could be changing suddenly we could have unexpected developments surprises um so Aquarius can be, and Pluto in Aquarius can be about um, technology and artificial intelligence. Um, it can also, on the darker side of Pluto in Aquarius, we can be dealing with um, themes of uh, dissociation, alienation, isolation, detachment. Um, so the way that social media has maybe, or, and the global pandemic has <laughs> maybe made us a little bit more isolated, right? More remote uh, meetings, more work from home, you know, Zoom meetings became a thing during the pandemic. So, um, so some of that uh, disconnect from our neighbors, some of that uh, changes in our social um, interactions that uh, make them more remote for better and for worse, right? Um, and uh, so so these are some of the things to look for with Pluto going into Aquarius. Um, change, uh, detachment, but, but also, you know, this potential for breakthrough, that possibility of something happening that has never happened before in a positive way, new solutions, innovations, inventions, new technologies, right? So really like there's the potential to see the problems um, that with Pluto and Capricorn can feel like very dire and very serious because they are. And then with Pluto in Aquarius, we might begin to see some ways through or have some breakthroughs or how to solve um, some of those issues. And so it's a very interesting year. Um, at any rate, uh, coming back to Capricorn, Capricorn new moon this week with Pluto still in Capricorn. Uh, Mars also in Capricorn. Mars went into Capricorn a couple of days ago. Uh, last week, I, I think it was Thursday. I'm not sure. Um, and then 
a lot of Capricorn energy. So, so, so some intense, this is kind of an intense vibey um, moon cycle coming up and it's going to bring us in confrontation with our limitations. So recognizing where the problems are, where the challenges are, what it is that needs to be fixed and solved, right? So sometimes that can throw us for a loop and make us feel like uh, worried about the future. But if you can keep in mind that it's coming up so that we can be creative. Human beings get this opportunity to respond. And this is the essence of Capricorn energy. So the word responsibility, which is very Capricorn, right? We have the burden of responsibility. We have that heaviness. It's serious. We're responsible. Um, but guess what that also means? It means we are able to respond. We have the power to respond to and who we are being in response to our limitations, in response to recognizing the issues and challenges and problems that we are confronting. So it's about standing in our truth. It's about finding our backbone. It's about remembering who we are and uh, what we're going to do about it. So there's the planning part, right? So you don't have to solve all the problems of the world. Thank goodness, because there are, I don't know how many billions, uh, 10 billion of us or whatever it is on the planet. So you just have your part to do. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be everybody to make huge changes. It just needs a few of us doing our part. So um, at least what, what, you know, what else are we going to do, right? Are we going to give up or are we going to recognize that we have this chance to create something incredible and we have the power of breakthroughs coming with Pluto in Aquarius. We have the power of shifting and changing and seeing things in new light and uh, new ways forward that we couldn't from where we stood in the past. We just couldn't see those ways forward. Um, freedom, equality, breakthrough. These are all themes of Pluto in Aquarius and how we're going to do that as a society, what that looks like. Also, higher principles. So ideologies that serve us going into the future. And those are some of the themes that we are seeing already heading into um, a presidential election year. So, so where was I? Um, okay, so with, <laughs> with a very Capricorn moon cycle starting this week, uh, early hours on Thursday, my time, U.S. Pacific time, um, we are beginning a moon cycle that could feel very serious, but also just to remember that this is an a, this is about an opportunity to respond. It is about what how are we going to respond? How are we going to do our part? So that ability to respond is also the path to infinite creative possibility. So just because, you haven't done something before, you haven't seen it happen before, you haven't known what to do about something before, doesn't mean you can't. It just means you haven't done it yet. So that openness, and I talk about this when the moon is in Aquarius a lot, I talk about opening, clearing space so you can open the window, let in some fresh air, right? Clearing your mind, um, by letting go of the, the you know, the myriad of day-to-day -day thoughts and cares and worries that we have, emptying your mind, because when you do that, you are making space for new ideas to occur to you. That's what ideas do. They occur to you. <laughs> so um, making space for them to pop in with the answer, right? The clarity. Oh, that's what I need to do. Oh, that's how I am going to show up for that. Oh, that's who I could be or how I could, what I could say in that situation, right? So, um, so anyway, that's Aquarius, but Aquarius comes after Capricorn. So, so first with the Capricorn moon cycle starting on Thursday, January 11th, we are, um, 
we're needing to get serious, think about how we can respond, who we are being, how authentic we are being, and getting grounded, laying foundations, and making a plan or, you know, putting something in place, right? So taking the action to uh, organize, right? Maybe it's, you know, making, booking uh, the, the flight or the hotel or something for a trip that you want to take. Or maybe it is uh, making the timeline for a project you're working on. So again, um, like I was sharing in the beginning of this video, we want to um, be thinking about tangible ways to get organized and think about how to take those baby steps to move forward and at least affirm who we are and what we want. We may not know yet how we're going to get there. The, the new ideas may not occur just yet, but we're, we're laying the groundwork for them, right? We're, we're creating the space to invite them in. And so when you plan the trip, for example, um, you you don't know what's going to unfold, what kind of magic is going to happen or developments are going to take place on that trip, right? You're just creating the space. You're, you're putting your foot in the ground saying, I'm going to do this. And then, and then things get to unfold from there and uh, emerge into your reality, um, right? Whatever's going to happen. So, um, so the more positive energy you can put into that, the more you can lay the foundation for standing in who you are and what you want, your principles, your passion, what feels important and meaningful to you um, that you were working on and are finishing up working on at the end of this Sagittarius moon cycle. So there are some thoughts for the upcoming Capricorn new moon on January 11th. Um, lots of Capricorn energy, but it's not the only energy that we have. Um, we also have Venus and Mercury in Sagittarius at the time of the exact new moon. So again, um, the, the chart or the planetary alignments at the moment of the exact new moon kind of give a tone a uh, theme, qualitative theme for what the moon cycle will feel like. And that vibe of a little bit of Sagittarius thrown in there means that we're um, also thinking about our beliefs, how we want to think about things and uh, what it, what is important to us. Um, also, uh, Saturn and Neptune still in Pisces, uh, connecting us with that bigger picture, that bigger flow. Also, dissolving some boundaries, dissolving some structures, making things confusing. Um, that's part of the soup we're swimming in right now, um, as well as Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus bringing some changes and growth in the area of our day-to-day -day, um, routines, rhythms, um, ways of getting grounded, ways of taking care of our bodies and our communities. And so feeling into that uh, sense of what is normal and um, how that is changing and how we want it, what, what, if something's going to change, what do we want it to change into, right? So instead of just um, feeling unstabilized, destabilized by the change, we can actually affirm um, through our intentions what it is we want that change to look like. And uh, then we never know what how how that's going to show up. So we have to trust that what shows up is what we have called in. Whatever shows up is what is going to help us move forward toward our intentions. And we just, as little human beings, we don't know how that's all going to work out or unfold, but we know what we have to do because we know who we are and we know what brings meaning to our lives, our bigger principles, our bigger ideologies, what we care about, what's important to us. And um, so this moon cycle 
beginning on January 11th with the new moon in Capricorn will give us that opportunity to create something, to bring it into being uh, based on those higher principles and things that are important to us, things that bring meaning to our lives. Thank you so much for being here. I am Marina Orms, and you can learn more about me at astrologyheals.com. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Check it out. I'm here every day with Astrology for Unshakable Self-Care. My uh, videos throughout the week are a little shorter, so you can get just a little um, dose of daily infusion of self-care and remembering who you are. And uh, that's my joy to bring that to you. So thank you so much for being here and for subscribing um, and all your likes and shares sharing these videos with a friend helps spread the word. So thank you, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.